Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video and this one, this might be a quick one man, we gonna talk about Saquon Barkley real quick and first and foremost I gotta say I told you so man, I told you, I've been telling y'all essentially since the beginning of the offseason, since since like March probably, all the way until now, I've been telling y'all that Saquon is going to be ready by week one. I've been saying this guy's a freak of nature. Now, now, I will say, ready by week one does not necessarily mean that he will be used as if he is ready at week one. You know what I'm saying? He could be 100% against the Broncos, but they're probably going to use him in like, let's say, 50% of the running snaps. We don't know, right? They're still going to ease him in even if he's 100% in my opinion because they're trying to be extremely cautious with him and they can honestly afford to do it unless proven otherwise. And then, you know, like say we're running with Booker and God forbid either Booker is bad or the line is bad and they're like, all right, we, we're going to kind of have to get Saquon in this game to try and win the game. Then that's how I see them using him like full percentage back immediately. But I've been telling y'all, he's not normal. He's going to be ready by week one. And the reason I'm saying this, of course, if, you know, from the title of the video, I'm sure you guys seen it. You've probably seen it all over Twitter. It's been on for a couple hours now. Today is the day that Saquon Barkley comes off of the physically unable to perform list. Um, he will join practice today. Now, originally, he was supposed to be back like maybe I want to say the first week of August, it's only the second week of August, honestly, so it's not that bad. And we were all thinking that he's going to be back in terms of NFL action by week three. That was kind of the story and the reports that were being pushed for a long time. Week three, week three is when you're going to see Saquon Barkley back. And even then, in his first game back, he's not going to get that much snaps, which, you know, of course, makes sense coming off of both an ACL tear and I think some with his knee. He had more than one injury in that leg i'm pretty sure he tore more than just an acl which was why it was so serious and why he had to like you know i think he had to wait to go into surgery or something because of the fact that it was just more than one thing it wasn't just an acl tear but either way he's already back in practice and we know he's been mirroring practices and he's been spending time with the coaches he's been keeping himself mentally and physically stimulated and following along with whatever the giants have been doing through training camp and we know that he still has that leadership role even though he can't fully participate he's still on the field there with the rest of the men with the rest of the team and he's still being a leader he's still either cheering them on motivating them encouraging them you know uh helping them learn advising them whatever the case may be saquon is still doing saquon things but man oh man i've been telling y'all bro i've been t i've been telling y'all man like when it comes to the ACL tear for running backs, yes, it is, you know, known as a career ending injury. Now, that has not necessarily been the case in recent years. There are exceptions to the rule. I will say it's still a rule, right? That the ACL usually means that's it for the running back. You know what I'm saying? Anything that deals with their knees and their legs, obviously, that's it for the running back. Of course, we all know AP. He is the perfect example of a comeback from an ACL tear. Right, Saquon doesn't have to be the perfect example of a comeback from an ACL tear, even though I think he could be very close to an AP-like comeback in terms of impact. You know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily saying he's going to be out there rushing for 2,000 yards or whatnot, but AP is the perfect comeback. The guy literally tore it up, uh, recovered, year later came back, won MVP, ran his team into the playoffs. We don't need to go that far back. Not only has the medical technology advanced a lot since then, that, you know, it's like a 10-year gap, we could go a little bit closer to another Minnesota Viking that recently recovered from an ACL tear and also, you know, kind of became one of the best, if not the best running backs in the league in recent years, and that's Dalvin Cook. Of course, Dalvin Cook, I think it was 2017 when he, has his, when he had his injury. He came back, I want to say, 2019? I could be wrong about that. Was that a 2018 or 2019? And did he not lead the league in rushing this past season or the season before? Is he not currently one of the bell cow backs in the NFL? Is he not currently one of the best running backs in the NFL? And Dalvin Cook, you know, as an athlete, as, you know, as a human being, I should say, actually, just because we're about to talk about how they're built, he is not on the same level as Adrian Peterson. And in my opinion, he's not on the same level as Saquon either when it comes to being a freak athlete and the way their bodies are just built. Saquon is a guy that is literally built different. 
in the NFL. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's only probably one other dude you can compare to him, and that's C-Mac, Christian McCaffrey. Those two guys are in another stratosphere of just how their bodies are constructed, how their bodies work, what they could do as athletes and whatnot. That's why we call them quote unquote freak athletes. So if Dalvin Cook can successfully recover from an ACL tear and then go on to become one of the best running backs in the league, Saquon, who was already one of the best backs in the league before the tear, I have complete faith that he can do just as good, if not better than Dalvin Cook with his recovery. I mean, we don't need to go back all the way to AP, guys. It's already been shown just a couple years ago that running backs could do it, and they could do it better than before, in my opinion, because of, once again, the advancements in medical technology. The fact that recovery is emphasized a lot more now than it was back then. The fact that they're being so careful with him. There's a lot of factors in this that goes towards his road to recovery. Now, the article I did get the information from was from NFL.com. And uh, I'm just going to read out really one more paragraph from them that uh, I share the same sentiment with, which is when they say, even if he doesn't do much, Barkley returning to the practice field today and exiting the pup list is the first glimmer of hope we have gotten that the former pro bowler might be ready for the season opener. The Giants could have kept him on the pup list for several more weeks, so his return to practice today indicates that both Barkley and the team are comfortable with where he is in rehab. Expect the ramp up period to be lengthy for Barkley. The Giants haven't pushed him throughout his rehab and they won't start now. Day by day, however, we expect to see baby steps from Barkley with the hope that he'll be that he'll be full to go to open the 2021 season. And I will say, like I said, this is the one part of the article I really agree with a lot. The rest of it is just kind of reporting the news that I already told you guys. But yeah, it's still going to be a journey from here. He's not going to be, you know, doing those low cuts, the quick cuts. He's not going to be doing, you know, jab moves, spin moves. He's not going to really be showing off that explosive or that burst of speed immediately because he's just getting off the pup list. I am going to be not necessarily excited, more intrigued and interested to see what they have him doing today now that he's going to be, I'm assuming, in pads. You know, he's coming off the pup. He's going to immediately be going to pads, I would think. And, you know, he's going to be working with Burton Burns, who's a guy that he really didn't have a chance to work with last offseason. I was very excited to get the legendary Alabama running back coach Burton Burns here on the Giants. You know, this is a guy that trained up guys like Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, any back from Alabama before uh, 2020, essentially. This guy trained up Josh Jacobs. You name it, he's done it. He's coached him. I'm really excited to see. I'm really excited to see him work with Rob Sale as well, the offensive line coach and the offensive line in general. Because Rob Sale at Louisiana Lafayette, uh, that I hope that was. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was school he was coaching at. As as the um, head coach or and offensive coordinator of Louisiana Lafayette, he ran a very run heavy offense. So we'll see how that goes. But guys, that's it for now. Put your thoughts down below and let me know what you all think. What do you think about Saquon coming up the pup list? How do you think he's going to be used? And what kind of recovery slash comeback do you think he's going to have? Like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.